Hey yo, what's up everybody? This is David and today we're going to be talking about the best PC VR settings for your MetaQuest 2 or 3 and how to get the most out of your Quest 2 or 3 when using it in PC VR. So personally, I am using a Quest 3 and I'm using it with a very high-end gaming PC. I've got an RTX 4090 as my GPU and my CPU is an AMD 7800X 3D. So this guide is going to be tailored a little bit more towards the high-end of gaming PC users. But even if you have a little bit more of a mid to high-end gaming PC, you can still take a lot of what I'm saying in this video and use it in your gaming PC as well. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going over the best cable choices, what the best Oculus debug tool settings are, and what the best settings for the MetaQuest app are as well. Now, starting with the cable, a lot of YouTubers are going to tell you just to get an aftermarket Amazon cable. Don't spend $80 for the official fiber optic cable that Meta is selling. And in my opinion, this is not correct. I don't recommend going this route. I actually do recommend going with either the Meta official fiber optic cable, or if you want to go aftermarket, at least get the fiber optic aftermarket cables they're going to be around fifty dollars which is still pretty expensive and is going to be more expensive than the aftermarket choices that you're going to find on amazon which usually range between 15 to 25 dollars but here's why it is so much better than those cables are first of all those cables are a lot thicker less flexible and they don't provide as much power to your headset as the official cable does. So starting with the flexibility, as you can see, this cable is thin and is extremely flexible. So what this actually means in actual gameplay, when you're moving around, you're spinning around, it's going to tangle less, it's going to be more flexible and just way easier to use in fact this cable actually reminds me a lot of the psvr2 cable all right so here's the psvr2 and here's its cable and here's the official metaquest cable right here link cable and as you can see they are actually almost exactly the same i wouldn't be surprised if the psvr2 is using the same fiber optic technology in their cable when i had a kiwi aftermarket cable it was tangling like crazy. Even if I just turned a few times, the cable would already be super tangled up. It was very thick and very hard to maneuver with. It was not flexible at all and very annoying to use, even though it provided, when I was testing it on the MetaQuest app, the same or similar amount of bandwidth to my Quest 3. I just find this cable to be much easier to use, especially for longer playing sessions. Not only that, but these fiber optic cables are going to be USB-C to USB-C. And usually on your computer, any gaming computer that you're going to use, the USB-C cable on it is going to be the most powerful port. It's going to provide the most amount of watts to the cable and I actually found that it charges my headset while I'm using it a lot more than when I was using the aftermarket cable. And that could be also because of the way the cable is designed. A fiber optic cable sends data through the fiber optic and power delivery through the copper cable, whereas the aftermarket cables are just all copper, so it's sending power delivery and data through the copper. And not only that, but I'll talk a little bit more about this later. I actually found the official link cable, whether it was because of my motherboard or because of the cable itself, I'm not too sure, but I found it to be a lot more reliable and I was able to push my video settings even higher with the official cable. Whereas if I were to push them to that same amount with the aftermarket cable, even though it was reading the same amount of bandwidth, I was getting stutters and it was almost unplayable. So there is an actual difference to the cables. You can buy the aftermarket ones, which are around $50, or do what I did and just go on eBay and find an open box 
model that costs about $40. I only pay $40 for my official link cable. It was unused, just an open box, and it works perfectly. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is go into the Oculus Diagnostics tool and change the video settings because this is going to give you the option of getting the best video quality out of your MetaQuest. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna go into your drive, program files, and go all the way down to Oculus. When you see Oculus, just double click on that and go to support. And when you find support, you are gonna wanna go to Oculus Diagnostics. And here is your Oculus debug tool. Now, I recommend what you do is go back and save this folder somewhere where you can access it quickly. So either save it on your desktop, you're somewhere down here or somewhere over here. I This is where I saved it personally, right here. And this allows me to quickly go into that folder because you will actually need to open this debug tool before every single time you start your MetaQuest 3 PC VR connection. And I'll tell you a little bit why later. So go ahead and open up this tool right here and Let's go over some of these settings here. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is basically just, let me turn this off, copy everything that you see here. This is what you're going to wanna copy. But let me tell you kind of what some of these settings are. So the two settings that you see here that I'm clicking on, the adaptive GPU performance scale and the asynchronous space warp setting, these are going to, by default, for some reason, every time you close the debug tool, reset themselves. Not always, but most of the time, I have them always reset themselves. And they are very annoying. So the first thing you're gonna wanna turn off is adaptive GPU performance scale. So this is basically going to, it's, it's kind of going to, it's like an adaptive resolution type of thing. So it's going to try to lower the resolution if it thinks that your computer can't handle whatever is being displayed. So this could be very annoying. You could experience, you know, a resolution drops and you don't even know why. So definitely turn this off. Now I'm talking to the high end gaming PC owners here. All right. If you're a low end or mid range gaming PC owner, obviously you can you can play around with it, but I'm talking to the high-end users, all right? Turn this off, you don't need this. Now, asynchronous space warp. This is basically reprojection and is extremely annoying and looks super awful. If you are going to turn it on, at least force it on, because if you leave it on auto, which it defaults to, you're going to get significant stutters. It's going to drop to 45 and then try to space warp up to fixed refresh rate that you set it at and it's going to keep turning this feature on and off automatically and you're going to get significant stutters and it's extremely annoying like i said this setting also defaults to auto every time or almost every time you close the debug tool distortion curvature just leave that on low video codec now we either have h264 or h265 and while h264 five is the better codec to use it's very popular right now it is the more efficient codec there are two problems with using it first of all if you do use it your quest is not able to decode h265 as fast as it is h264 so first of all what you're going to get is you're going to get higher latency and you're not going to be able to turn up the megabytes per second of your encode bitrate as much as you would with H.264. So while it is more efficient and it does look better at the same megabytes per second as H.264, you're not able to turn it up any more than I believe it's like, it's either 200 or 400, something like that. But either way, when I use it, I was getting heavy stutters and it didn't look that great. And I was getting a lot of latency. So in my opinion, just go to H.264 and you're going to be able to turn up that encode bitrate to a much higher value. Going down here, sliced encoding, uh, just keep this on default and then don't worry about all this, don't worry about all this. 
dynamic bitrate turn that off encode dynamic bitrate turn that off disable it like i said it's going to automatically try to change the bitrate you don't want that you want a steady bitrate amount and now we go on to our encode bitrate now by default this is going to i believe say zero or something like that or if you try to type something in like let's say i'm going to try to type in 700 it's not going to allow me to do that all right 600 nope not going to allow me to do that 500 yep that is the maximum that it's going to allow you to actually type into the debug tool now you can leave it at 500 it doesn't look horrible but you are going to see a pretty good amount of compression artifacting and i'd say that the minimum you want to set it at to almost not see any compression artifacts is at least 600. that's where i was almost not even able to tell that i had any compression artifacts but we have the option of going all the way up to i believe 964 megabytes per second that is the maximum that we can get it to where our quest can actually decode that amount so unfortunately we're not allowed to actually type it in so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to um it's going to create a little little text right there all right and i'm just going to type in 900 and all you got to do is copy and paste and now we can save that amount. For some reason, we can't type it in, but we can copy and paste it in. Now, the reason I do 900 and 964, it's just for a little bit of headroom, you know what I mean? Uh, 964, I don't wanna max it out, so I'm doing 900, just cause there isn't really a significant amount of difference. And with 900, it is almost like being wired. I mean, it is extremely clear. It looks amazing. For link sharpening, go ahead and Keep that on normal. It's just going to kind of try to sharpen up the image. Normal looks just fine. Just don't disable it because it does look worse. Definitely keep it on normal. Now, if you want to track your performance, this is where you're gonna do it. In the visible HUD, just select performance when you're in a game or before a game, and it's going to show you a little, little frame time graph with the frame rate and everything so you can know if you're getting any frame drops or what's going on it's going to tell you that but if you already got that figured out just hit none and go into your MetaQuest link app all right so this is where you're going to want to actually go to your device and change a few settings first of all though if when you do open this you are going to probably get asked a question to set your open xr runtime as default for this app and you are going to want to do that now after that go into your device click on your device i have the quest 3 if you have the quest 2 it's going to do the same thing click on it and go down here to graphics preferences all right click on that and first we're going to start out with the resolution slider here the render resolution it's going to default to 1.0x and if you have a quest 3 you're going to think that oh okay that's native that's what i want to keep it at but no you don't want to do that with the quest 3 this is actually below the resolution of the quest 3. so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to slide this until it says 2240. I'd say this is the minimum that you're gonna wanna run your Quest 3 at, okay? 2240 is a nice little up sample for your Quest 3. If you have a Quest 3, if you have a Quest 2, it's gonna be a lower native resolution. So I believe this is actually the native of your Quest 2, but if you have a Quest 3, you're gonna wanna at least have it at 1.1 times. It's going to up sample just a little bit but because I have a 4090, I am able to upsample it all the way to 1.5 times. And you're going to want to do this with VR because VR is a little different to just looking at your 4K screen. A 4K screen, it's fine to just run it at the native resolution and 
you're good to go. But with a VR headset, you are so close to the screens, you are able to see the details a lot more. So you're gonna want to have the resolution render it as much as possible. And if you're able, do it at the 1.5 times maximum that it's gonna allow you to do. Now onto the refresh rate. Your Quest 3, if you have a Quest 3, can actually go up to 120 hertz. But if you have a Quest 2, it can only go up to 90 hertz. But I don't recommend going to 120 hertz, okay? The reason I don't is because the link cable or the Quest itself is not able to keep up in some games. Some games I'm fine with. I can actually run it at 120 hertz just fine but I have to turn down the encoding bitrate. So for me, for example, using the official cable with my high-end gaming PC, I was only able to hit 120 hertz at 600 encode bitrate. That's the maximum that I was able to go to for it to stop stuttering and crashing and going crazy. But there are some games such as Blade and Sorcery where I can't even play it with those settings. I couldn't even play it with 500 or 400 megabytes per second with 120 hertz output. I think the amount of data that is going through that cable and that your quest has to decode is just way too much at 120 hertz for some games. And I prefer to just leave it and forget it. So for me personally, I don't like to change all these settings. I just leave it at 90 hertz. For me, this is the best compromise. And it also kind of gives me a little bit of headroom. And I'm allowed to take that debug tool and call bitrate all the way up to 900. And in my opinion, it looks a lot more sharp and I see a lot less compression artifacts than if I were to run at 120 and 600 megabytes per second. Now, if you can't run 90 Hertz, I would try to always prioritize your megabytes per second and your resolution over the refresh rate. In fact, I would go as low as 72 Hertz and still try to keep as high of a render resolution as you can because in my opinion, the sharpness and the lack of compression artifacts is a much better visual experience than the higher refresh rates. Now, of course, that depends on which game you're playing. Maybe you're playing a game like Beat Saber where latency does matter, but generally, if you're on a more mid spec PC, I would lower the amount of Hertz in favor of resolution and the encoding bitrate. But for me, I'm just fine with leaving it at 90. Pretty much every game has worked just fine with this, and I'm able to max out the render resolution with 90 hertz without an issue for me personally. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Let me know if this helped you out in the comments below. And I want you all to have a great day. Have a good one. Peace.